Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Applied Energistics tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Matter Cannon, which is the, well, gun in AE2. Uh, to talk about that, we're also going to talk about the Matter Condenser and the Cell Workbench, both uh, useful things when you're going to be using this Matter Cannon. So first of all, let's take a look at how to craft everything. The first thing is the matter condenser. Now the reason you want to craft this is because one of the primary ammo types of the matter cannon is made here. It also has a very important use in one of the, in basically the highest end component of applied energistics too, at least one of them. So to craft the matter condenser, it's really, really simple. It's just a piece of fluix dust, four glass blocks, and four iron ingots. It's extremely cheap. Okay. Next, we have the actual matter cannon itself, which is the gun that stores ammo and then fires it, dealing damage, which is generally what guns do. It's crafted with an energy cell, not a dense one like that other thing was, a formation core, a 4K ME storage component, don't forget it, it has to be 4K, and then three iron ingots, and that gives you the matter cannon. Now, when you craft it, it has no energy, and you need to store energy in it by using the charger. And then we have the cell workbench, a very, very useful block that I've been trying to fit into a discussion, but it fit pretty, pretty well here. The cell workbench is crafted with a chest, a calculation processor, two wool, and five iron ingots. And it is used to program and basically partition storage cells to only hold specific items. So why would that be useful? Well, we take a let's take a look at what we can load into our matter cannon. The matter cannon is not able to fire anything at all. It uh, needs to have specific ammo. And those ammo types are paint balls, matter balls, iron e nuggets, I almost said ingots, and gold nuggets in order from least damaging to most damaging. So if you want to deal the most damage with this gun, you'll literally be firing gold at people. But a much more economical ammo is the matter ball. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of the ammo types. So over here in my little ME terminal doodly-doo, my system here, I've got the various ammo types, gold nuggets, iron nuggets, matter balls, and paint balls. Now you might be wondering to yourself, how do you craft paint balls? Well, it's actually very, very simple. To craft a paintball of a given color, just place a die in the middle and then surround it with matter balls, eight of them. And that gives you eight paintballs. You can use any color that you want. This is the white paintball, but you can use any color of die. Now, the way that you load the matter cannon is very different from other guns. The ammo is currently depleted and it has no GUI of its own. Instead, the matter cannon acts as a storage cell. Um, the same way that these uh, storage cells are, are cells. So there's two ways to load it. And I forgot to grab those things out. The first way, and they're the same ways that we used when we loaded the other thing. Uh, when we loaded the um, paint thing. The cell workbench is not actually part of the network. You can use the MEIO port, or you can use an ME chest. If you go ahead and place the matter cannon, which acts as a, as a storage cell, in the um, ME chest, you can then place things into it, except it will only take ammo. For, let me grab out these ammo types. And you can use it to place them in. Now you'll notice I can only place the gold ingots. I mean nuggets. That's because, if you see this yellow light, the matter cannon might be able to fire all of these ammo types, but it can't store all of them at once. It only has one of one type. It only stores one type of item at a time. So you can only load one type of ammo into your matter cannon. So let's pull the um, gold nuggets out. Now, you can also then use the MEIO port to fill it up problem with that is that as soon as we place it in, let's place the stuff that it can go in it uh, right away. Uh, as soon as we transfer data to storage cell, if we place it in here, it's going to grab out one of our item types at random. It's not going to tell us, let us choose which one goes in. So it loaded the gold probably because it was first on the list. Now we don't want that. We want to be able to tell it 
what we want to put in here. And that's where the cell workbench is handy when we're using our matter cannon. The cell workbench works like so. You take a storage cell, or in this case the matter cannon, place it in this little slot up here. Then you can put whatever item that you want, items that you want to be able to store in this cell in here. For instance, let's say I had a ridiculous amount of stone and I wanted an, an entire 1k enemy storage cell that would hold all of my stone. I could place the stone into this square here, press the partition storage button, and then if we look at this, it says that it is now partitioned, included, precise. Okay? So, and you can also copy uh, very things and, and clear the settings. So now this 1K ME storage cell will have all of my stone. If I were to place stone in this uh, thing here, it would all be in this, um, it should be in this cell. Is this the partitioned one? No, 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 this isn't the partitioned one. Wait, where's the partition one go? Okay, wait, wait, I did it wrong again. Did it wrong again. I always sort of got this wrong. Partitioned. Okay, it still says partitioned. It still says partitioned. Okay, so now it's actually properly partitioned it. So I did that wrong. Don't click this button here. What this button does is it partitions the drive based on what's already in it. So don't click that. Just put the items in here and pull it out. I, I always made that mistake. I'm very sorry about that. So now this ME storage cell is partitioned to only store one type of item and that type is stone. Therefore all of the stone is on this one drive which lights up yellow because it's got all its types loaded. If I pull it out there's no more stone in the system here. So if we place our matter cannon in here and we wanted to say load up matter balls, we could place a matter ball in here, pull it out, and now it's been partitioned and it should only accept matter balls as long as we're able to actually partition this thing, which we might not be able to do. Yes, we did. So it pulled out the matter balls because we partitioned it to only take matter balls. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, clear the settings. Set this back to transfer the network, get everything out. And we're going to experiment with the matter cannon to see exactly how much damage it does. Wait, miscellaneous. So let's grab ourselves a spider spawn. Make sure I'm not on peaceful, which I was. Grab ourselves our matter cannon. And starting from the weakest ammo, which is the paintball, we are going to take a look at how much damage paintballs deal to the spiders. So now that I got some paintballs in here, I can right click and I can fire the paintball. And it actually kind of <laughs> sticks on the tree there. It's pretty neat. So let's spawn a spider and start shooting it with paintballs. As you can see, it's not actually taking any damage. So, yeah. Paintballs are not a good weapon. Unless you want to have a paintball fight, I guess. Um, paintball's not good. It doesn't deal any damage. So, let's take that out. And this time, let's load in our matter balls, which, if as we uh, have been discussing, is the um, like second type of ammo. So, matter balls deal less damage than iron nuggets and gold nuggets, but, you know, they're much easier to get. So now if we shoot this spider, we can see it's dealing two hearts. Not bad for a ranged weapon. Not entirely great. And if we shoot it at the ground, it will actually... If we shoot it at stuff, the matter balls, it will actually... It's a rail gun, basically. This is a rail gun. It will destroy terrain. So that's pretty cool. So be careful with it, is what we're basically saying. Now we've used up about 20% of the stored energy already, so it does... Uh, sort of wear down kind of quickly. Okay, now we'll grab our iron nuggets and see how much damage we can do with that. Should be pretty good. 
We'll spawn another spider. And shoot him with iron nuggets. One and a half. Okay, so the matter balls do deal more damage than the iron nuggets. Great. So, so scratch everything that I said before. Matter balls deal more damage than iron nuggets. Fantastic. So we'll clear that out. This is why we uh, test things. Stick the matter cannon back in here. Load in some gold nuggets. Gold, of course, very uh, dense and very heavy. That dealt five hearts of damage. And it chews through the terrain. It deals a lot more terrain damage. Apparently. So yeah, five hearts of damage per gold a nugget. That's pretty darn good. Um, I mean, it's pretty expensive to fire gold nuggets. But I suppose if you can justify the price, if you have, I don't know, infinite gold nuggets or something, that could be quite, pretty useful. So now that we've demonstrated the various uh, ammo types, let's take a look at how to make these matter balls um, that we've been talking about. Well, that's done over here at the matter condenser. Now, the matter condenser, if we look at this, is essentially, and it should look like that by default, when you open it up for the first time, it'll look like this. This is basically the trash can of applied energistics. Um, it's currently set to destroy items. Anything you put in here will get destroyed. If I put this dirt in here, it just goes away, gets destroyed. You never see it again. However, there's a slot up here, and if you can tell, it looks like a storage component, like uh, one of these. If you place a storage component in here, it will allow you to store energy. Okay? Now, if we grab the lowest grade one that you can get your hands on, which is the uh, simple um, 1K storage component, plop it in, we can store 0 of 8,192 energy. If we were to pop in the 4K, we can now store 32,000. And if you pop in the 64K, we can store 524,288. And the other ones are in there. Actually, there's only one other one. So let's grab it out and, you know, actually demonstrate it, which was the uh, 16K. So the 16K, yeah, 131,072. Okay, so why would you want to do this? Well... You can make matter balls this way. 256 per item is what it says. So now when we look at the stored energy, it says 0 of 256. And it doesn't matter which of these you put in there, it's going to say 0 of 256 because that's what it's trying to make. But as we know, if we go to destroy, it can store 8,192. Okay? So don't let that confuse you either. I want to go ahead and... Actually, no. We're going to use this to, um, to show off a, uh, an aspect of this. Okay, so I have 320 stone in this storage cell, this 1k enemy storage cell. Now, I want to store this stuff. I want to dump this stuff into the uh, matter condenser. First, let's see if we can actually do that. Nope, you can't put cells in there. And if I put it in here, you can't do that either. So you can't just stick storage cells into the matter condenser. Okay, so you have to stick stuff in manually, or I believe you can set up an... Uh, interface uh, to do it for you with auto crafting um, but I'll check I'll test that and, and try it out later but I know for a fact that you can just stick stuff in it um, so let's go ahead and place this in here so that we can pull the stone out so let's say I want to make some matter balls so I can fire them from my awesome matter cannon rail gun well I need to put 256 energy in here if I put a piece of stone in here it gives me one I put an iron ingot in here, I got one. It doesn't matter what you put in here. You always get one stored energy. So you want to stick items in here that are really cheap and easy to get in mass quantities. A cobble generator is good for this. And there we go. I stuck in four stacks of stone and I got one matter ball. So so you want to, if you want to make matter balls, you're going to want to feed in Items that you can mass produce incredibly cheaply. I was thinking about this earlier. Cobble generators are obviously good for this. Um, you know, if you have rotary craft, canola seeds are generated in enormous quantities. If you have a big enough, if you have a big canola farm, you can make 
just stacks on stacks on stacks of canola seeds. So maybe you want to use that um, in case you don't have any good cobble gens in your mod pack or that it's not working right if you're on a server. Because sometimes cobble gens can get a bit funky uh, with tick rate. So basically, if you want to make matter balls, figure out what it is that you can produce in enormous quantities and feed it into the matter condenser. Make sure you have the uh, matter balls selected. And then it will create them and you can pull them out of the matter condenser and uh, you can put them in your matter cannon and shoot them and deal damage to things. Now, there's one more setting on the matter condenser and that's the singularity. Now, if I select the singularity, it tells me that it needs 256,000 per item. But if I look up here, I can only store 8,192 in this 1k ME storage component. You can't use that storage component to make a a uh, singularity. In fact, you can't even use the 16. If you want to make a singularity, you must put in a 64k ME storage component, the most expensive one there is, the biggest one. And there you go. Now you can store the 256,000 energy you need to make a single singularity. We're not going to do that in this episode because the singularity is used for another piece of tech, which is very late game in AE. And we're going to talk about that in the next episode of the Applied Logistics tutorial series. Needless to say, it's exactly the same thing. If you want to make a singularity, you're going to have to put 256,000 items into the matter condenser with the selected and a 64k storage component in here. But we're going to talk about that in the next episode of this tutorial series. Needless to say, the matter cannon is pretty cool. Oh, my ammo is depleted. I wanted to shoot it some more. Let's put some more like matter balls in here and, uh, and have some fun just shooting them around. No. I want those. <laughs> so that's the matter cannon. It's a little rail gun. It's pretty neat. Destroys terrain, deals damage. Pretty darn cool. Uses power pretty quickly. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We talked where we talked about the matter condenser, the matter cannon, and the cell workbench. Cell workbench, very very useful device for uh, managing your storage. So don't forget it. Anyway, stay tuned for future episodes. The next episode, of course, we're going to talk about the quantum ring, which is what we need the singularity for. So that's going to be enjoyable. Stay tuned for that. Anyway, I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.